be uh, not to be decided or uh, that maybe they should also not for us they should not also decide on our in our stead and say oh you're a woman you can't do this you're not physically fit to do this uh, or maybe for the leadership position and they cannot just say you're a woman how you can you make such decisions and this kind of uh, suppression is something we have encountered. This is not because of the uh, social um, that uh, stereotyping as well, but this is what happened. We have seen it in the revolution. We have to say that this is what do we mean by equality? What do you mean by equal rights? And we have to you know, raise awareness um, in the, during the revolution too. Thank you. May I follow up a question to you, Sam? That now that the revolution has been, uh, uh, is also uh, no, no, escalating, it also is expanding. So we are also seeing that uh, it is also important with the broadening of the revolution and the spread of the revolution in different parts. It is important that uh, as the arm resistance, as the arm forces, it's important not to uh, not to be infected with the horrible uh, characters, uh, characters and behaviors of the terrorist military hunter and the importance to follow and comply with the military code of conduct. What will be your recommendation as a, um, as a freedom fighter? Well, that now that we are also part of the armed forces and that we also uh, have uh, weapons, it is important that we be, we remain grounded. To, we remain grounded. It is important that we do not take the opportunity for granted as well. And that uh, that um, and that uh, what we are doing this revolution because we don't like the the way the behavior of the military. We want to change the system. We want to change the military regime. But what, meanwhile. We, it is also important that we remain steadfast to our course. We do not become fascists ourselves. We do not become authoritarians ourselves. Whenever we receive the funding, it is also important uh, that um, that that uh, that you know it is uh, uh, that it is that we have to explain that what we are doing uh, that uh, as well as uh, it is important to realize what is happening as well. So I think rather than uh, you know giving advice and that. Uh, after I know it's been uh, two years and the people are tired. I understand that people are tired, you know, either or that you're a military friend or you're providing logistic or supporting the revolution. It is hard, it is not easy, you're tired, you're exhausted, but it is important for us to remain resilient. When you want to give up, when you think uh, that you can no longer go on, think about the others because that's the key of this revolution as well. And that uh, it is important uh, that, uh, you know, that, um, you know, it is important to think about others who are remain into that it is important to think about the others and remain steadfast and committed to the movement and remain strong to their movement as well that uh, it is true thank you for that uh, that uh, is this one uh, that, that uh, it is important um, uh, that uh, it is because you know there are, we we don't like the military working for their own interests or self interest as well and that uh, that uh, that's why we are in this uh, uh, we are in uh, this uh, revolution as so that we are also it's also important for the end resistance or the freedom fighters for the youth who are in the revolution they have been tired they are exhausted they are making a lot of sacrifices it's respectable it is also important I would also like to add to the point that you raised and remain strong and that uh, stay strong for the revolution because our victory is imminent so I would like to next uh, give a turn to uh, Comrade Jamboy, that uh, you know during this time, uh, what are the challenges that you are facing, and that uh, and also that what are the difficulties that you have, uh, and that uh, you know that that and also and that also to share with us as well as on the uh, that the challenges and difficulties as well. Hello, Sister Jane. Can you uh, are you ready to discuss? Maybe is, is it your connection issue?
Comrade James, well, okay, so sorry about that. Uh, please bear with us, uh, since uh, Comrade James was having difficulty with the internet connection. Then uh, I would like to invite uh, that, um, Mayele, what about your experience of the challenges about it as well? And that, uh, and that, and also that, can you also share with us uh, some of the, uh, the, some of the experience that you have had uh, as well? I would like to um, invite you once again to share your experience, the challenges that you have encountered as well. And that, uh, so when, when I joined the revolution, it started from the very beginning, since the time, since the time I was taking the best to join before to do the military, it has been a, it has been a challenge as well that, uh, that, uh, that, and I also have faced a lot of challenges. It was quite difficult even to get to where I'm as well. And that, uh, that uh, as well that um, you know that that you know in the you know as a as a you know I was in the military but I was working administration I never really got trained with the artillery I never had to you know fire like mortars or the rocket launchers or anything and but 20 days after then uh, and I have to start to run away because of the because of the military shelling artillery fire on the IDB camp as well they were targeting, they were targeting us. And we can hear that as well, whenever we hear the rocket, and then if you if you look up and then you'll see that as well. And I was, you know, I was, I was, I didn't even know that they were shooting at us because we were in IDP camp. But but they, they, when we realized that they are shooting at our camp and that we had ran away and that, you know, that I didn't know. And that why we were, you no know, because we have to walk we have to walk to a re reach a you know safe place, and that as a woman, you know, to even to go to the even to even to uh, go to the you know toilet can be difficult because you know in the jungle, you know, to take a shower or you know to be able to relieve yourself that can be very difficult as well. That uh, it is that uh, it has been a challenge, and that uh, that uh, it is very difficult as well. That. Uh, that, that you know that uh, you know what is happening is that uh, you know on the on, on the on the in the sky they are they are firing artillery shell and you are carrying your own pack backpack and then as uh, you are as you are going through the water and that uh, and that um, that and also uh, sometimes it can also be very difficult as well and that uh, you know uh, that uh, uh, that uh, we also have also faced a lot of challenges as well and that uh, then again uh, that. Uh, that uh, I know it was challenging, very, very challenging to be able to travel one place to another as well. That that it, it has been quite difficult, you know, because of the, you have the, all the leeches who are going to the water. It was very difficult. It was her. Uh, they're firing at you. It was very difficult. It has been a, you know, memorable experience for us for what? That, uh, you know, so they, they they are also face, facing a lot of challenges. So it can be, uh, no, can it can be very, you know, difficult as well. And that, uh, for me, however, that whenever I face challenges or difficulties, uh, that that uh, you know, that now I now that I'm in, and that uh, we the fact that uh, the fact that I'm in this movement, I'm in this revolution, is that I have taken a turn, and that uh, that cannot be irreversible and so for me is there is only way forward in that uh, you know that I have uh, banned all my bridges because uh, for me it's the only way forward to move ahead with the revolution uh, that is uh, you know in the in later days uh, when I see the military not only violently crack down or crack, crack down the people you know in the beginning I get negative response from the people from colleagues or from friends or families so they were they were saying that I'm not doing the right thing but when the military started to escalate their violence against the people you know when the military started the scorchers policy where they're banning down village, villages and entire entire communities for supporting the movement now people are now now people have come to realize that I did the right thing so they are also support me in this way as well. So I would like to uh, continue with you, you know, that Mayele, that uh, what about the international concerns? How, what can we do to, uh, to so how can we do to, you know, that to address the concerns from the international community? What can we do to ensure that our forces uh, comply with the code of conduct and that they follow the, uh, the, uh, they follow the international the policies? So. International policy is very important in this uh, movement as well. 
and that uh, for example like uh, right now so we so we, that we are doing a lot of good things and that at the same time that uh, when we see that uh, we the international community also is very worried that uh, our armed forces our freedom fighters will become uh, you know the terrorist organization or the organization without the limits or controls as well so with the energy leading the revolution movement so uh, to all the any um, organizations we are we are engaging with them to have a have a chain of command to be able also to to give uh, that uh, you know have a common structure as well and that it is also important to ensure that uh, ethnic um, organizations are also have uh, are in uh, different areas uh, for them as well i think it is also important to have uh, like we are also building a uh, like check and balance and we also have a negotiation and then a discussion with the energy government as well and it is also important to ensure that um, that uh, the regulations of the Geneva Convention has been followed as well. That there are also international standards, international humanitarian standards, as well as and the and the code of conduct for the for the for the armed forces. This is something we are all if we can work that if we can not only abide by that but also to show this is how we are working. Uh, I think that will also that we were able to uh, were able to address the concerns of the international communities in. It is important to have a uh, military code of conduct rules and regulations for all the fighters. And if we have that systematically, and also we also important to follow them carefully as well, that it is important to have that, uh, that are, uh, you know, that are uh, clear, um, that um, we can follow them uh, clearly. And then uh, that uh, it is also important to restructure our forces in such a way to ensure that the system it is uh, working in a good system and for the you know fighters uh, for who are you know in this revolution it is important to remind ourselves that the, the power is not at the you know um, not at the at the top at the at the end of our rifles that uh, we have took up uh, we had taken up arms because we need to fight against the military regime it's not about a, as having power at all we once we have opted for the and revolution. This is the journey that we have selected. This is the part that we are on. It is all important to ensure we do not abuse the power we have by having the weapons in our hands as well. It is important that we differ from them, the, from the others. We hope, I, I believe, and that I'm, I, I believe, and I know that our our fighters will not be like the military who will not abuse the powers of the gun. It is also important to have us uh, to have structured discipline as well as some regulations to follow. Thank you, Yele, for a very comprehensive answer. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that uh, you know, there are also uh, that uh, so like uh, in the military, in the military, there is a uh, like system code of conduct is quite limited as well. Right now, at the outside. Um, you know, the military is not practicing anymore that has, you know, to treat the people like the water or the moon, it is uh, completely forgotten. They are acting uh, like quite the opposite. They are considering the community, the people and them civilians at the enemy. And that uh, all, they always target the civilian without any hesitation. And such kind of violence and oppression or the targeting the civilian in the, in the denominator, you know, distinguish uh, kind of uh, targeting is not new to this military because they have exercised such as, I guess, ethnic communities before. Now that we are seeing it across the country, when all the people of Myanmar are in equal sufferance of the military, that is in a way also consolidating our stand against the resistance as well. And that uh, it is important to have a strong code of conduct for the armed forces. That it is important to respect the civilians, respect the, the community, to treat them like war, to, to treat them like the bone, so to speak, is important. Now, I would like to give another turn to Comrade Jane Boy. Comrade Jane Boy. What are the challenges that you have encountered during the revolution? How did you overcome these challenges? And on these, uh, out of these uh, difficult experiences and challenges, what are your, you know, what has been a memory of experiences for you? Please share it with the people. Thank you. I hope that you can hear me well. Yes, we can hear you well. Please proceed with the discussion. When, since I joined this revolution, I have faced all sort of challenges and difficulties. Some of them made me very depressed. I would like to share one of them. When I was in training, 
um, I tried so hard, and after that, I graduated and joined all the respective battalions. My when I joined the battalion of graduation, a month after that, my brother, my younger brother, who was the ex-policeman joining civil disobedience movement, died. We did not see his dead body. And right at that time, my mother was facing the bike accident. And the battalion I was with got attacked by the military, they burned the, the, the camp, the battalion camp. We were running away at that time. So I was totally depressed. I could not talk about my situation to my mother who was in motorbike accident. My brother Funora was there. I could not tell my situation. I could not go to the funeral and my mother got this accident. I cannot talk about my situation, but in my mind, I felt that I had to struggle myself. No one asked me to be in this revolution and no one forced me to be in this battalion. So I did not see the point of having all the mumbling about myself. So I tried to stand up myself. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this sad story. I feel very sorry for you, but there are people for you there. People are there for people. Thank you. Now, I would like to ask you about a second question, which has to do with ethic. Um, what would be the ethical standpoint that um, you would have to adhere to in order to really protect the people? Thank you. Well, in order to respond to this question, we are revolting the military dictatorship. So we, as the evolutionists, would have to be on the righteousness. You should not be on the on your own personal interest. You should not earn money or you should not make money out of this revolution. This is your national spirit that you are fighting against the military dictatorship. So basically, you have to have all the high moral values in order to win the revolution. And there were armed brokers and making money out of this revolution. We face this inadequate instruments, materials, arms in this revolution. So please don't put money in your pocket. We have to fight this revolution and we have to stand together in this struggle in a very solidarity manner. Thank you. Thank you very much for your response. Good faith, it's what I learned from your from your discussion. You have to be honest, you have to be genuine in terms of your value in this revolution. With a good faith, this country will stand on its own and all the betterment will be enhanced. This is, I strongly believe. Lastly, I would like to invite Comrade Sun. In this revolution, 
the role of a woman is something that I would like to ask you. Yourself as a woman, what would be your opinion on this dynamic of this revolution? What is your belief in this revolution? What is your value regarding this revolution on your own? Thank you very much. Uh, moderator, would you please repeat the question for me because I have internet connectivity unstable, so I do not hear some bits of your question. Thank you. Well, I am asking your personal belief, opinion, value on this revolution as a woman. Thank you. Are you all are you all okay there? First of all, I would like to talk about the role of a woman in this revolution. We are having this arm struggle and although we take arms, we are different from the military. In our revolution uh, arm struggle, the role of a woman is taken very seriously. Role of a woman are not undermined in this arm struggle. Women are not kept only for the low rank. Women are treated equally in this arm struggle. In terms of my belief, this spring revolution is not just to get rid of the military dictatorship. This um, uh, this spring revolution, it's to abolish all form of discrimination, including Burmese supremacy ideology. Sorry, the speaker voice, it's cut off due to the internet connection problem. We want to have the system reformed in order to have a good country, in order to have a better country in terms of its all systems for the public. So this is the belief that I joined this revolution. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Now, I would like to invite Yi Yin Le. What is the role of a woman in this spring revolution? And what is your opinion, belief, expectation, vision, yourself for this revolution? Now the floor is yours. I hope that you can hear me. Well, it seems it is not the case. Well, I'm sorry that my internet connectivity is not good. Yes, it seems so because we don't hear you very well. What, what I was saying is that we have CDMR, in this revolution and there are groups, organizations explaining people that it is important to join in this public struggle and public movement. And there are many, many women joining in this revolution. Only the military undermines the role of a woman. They always think that women can do nothing. And they always oppressed women. And they do not look up the women. They always think that women 
will fill whatever task that they will be given. But we prove them that we can make the changes, we can achieve things. So in PDF, women are needed. Women sue uniform for the comrades. There are women warriors as well. There are women leaders as well. And there are women in all the auxiliary troops, including medical troops. So in general, women population is more than that of a man. So in this revolution, there is a need to have a balanced struggle between women and men. Women cannot be left out or leave behind. And in terms of arm struggle, the our comrades feel very much motivated. And we have a very high spirit in terms of our belief, in terms of our achievement so far. Of course, there are many weakness and there are many insufficiencies, including arms. But within sh that short period of the time, look at where we are now. There were revolution in the past, but they, none of them were successful. But within that short period of the time so far, there are some ideology changes and there are ethnic joining this revolution. So with this, I strongly believe that we will win. We are revolting against such a strong and resourceful institution, the military dictator. But I do believe that this revolution is a revolution for the previous systems that this country rooted. We will need time to make changes. There are discrimination, there are gender discrimination, and there are many forms of injustice in the system. So we are revolting against all of them. And people now see the capability and capacity of a woman in this revolution. So with this, I strongly believe that we will succeed, succeed in this revolution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, giving this contribution. And we do definitely see women participations in every level and every aspect of this revolution. And since you're talking about the CDM, there are officials joining the CDMR, uh, the CDM movement. And when I, um, when I heard um, that people say, and particularly a very high senior officials would say that, you know what, these people joining CDM, it was just a joke. What can they do to our established institution? They laughed at us. I heard it when my boss made such comment when I joined the CDM, but we prove that we can do what we want. With this belief, I am sure that we will make a change. We will win in this revolution. And 
talking about this very high senior officials, the, the very high senior officials are all about their greed and their personal interest, and they do not see the righteousness. So with this attitude of such people, we are for sure that the righteous will prevail over the darkness. Now, I would like to ask you, Jim, Jim Bue, about this very same question in terms of a woman role and in this revolution and your opinion and belief for this revolution. Thank you. It is the stereotype attitude that women can not do much, but men can. Uh, but I would like to challenge that. There are many things women can do, whereas men cannot. Uh, for example, uh, in the medical um, support, in financial support, and in armed struggle, there are women playing a very successful role. So women must not be ignored in this revolution. And even in the revolution, there are things that can handle only by the women as well. And if, I mean, when women participated in the revolution, public feel very motivated. Public will say that, you know what? See, this woman is in the revolution physically. Why can't I? not participate so with that kind of impression people will feel energetic well i can go on but in terms of a role of a woman i see it essential critical to be in this revolution and another thing that i would like to talk about is the particular role of a woman as the previous speaker mentioned that women play a very complementary role for the male comrades in this revolution. When male comrades are fighting with arms at the front, women, comrades at the back, sew clothes, uniforms, prepare for those at the front lines for materials that they may be in need. So what I would like to say is that we are winning for 99%. Why I say so is that the military dictatorship control only at the city. Where, when they leave or wherever they leave outside of the city, it will be their graveyards. So with this kind of dynamic and situation, I can say that we are winning for that much, for 99%. So public, don't depress with this revolution. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution, Jim Bue. Now, it is a time to give the floor with the public for the Q&A. Anonymous ask a question. That question is about why can't women do the same as the men? Um, for him, he would not think that women can do everything men can. In order to comment on this, there are things that women are good at, there are things that men are good at as well, but as long as right people at the right place with the right task is all about the winning. Thank you. And I also have another um, comment saying that gender discriminations are used as the um, tool to oppress uh, people uh, but then again with that tool it's also utilized in this arms um, struggle in the revolution as well thank you 
And um, for that, I would like to ask Sam to respond to this. Well, if I understand this question correctly, would the gender discrimination used as a tool in the in the revolution? Well, unfortunately, this kind of gender discrimination is still there in the revolution. Why I say so is the fact shows that there are evidence of the um, gender discrimination on the ground. Again, I am not blaming anyone. I do not necessarily blame the, um, the, the, the military, but if you look at our societal structure, it is a very patriarchy system in our domestic life. So some of the um, individual would have a very patriarchy um, behavior without necessarily knowing that he is discriminating against the woman because they are born with that kind of system. So that's why there is a need to have a system reform because we are revolting the whole system. So what is the right of a woman? What is the gender equality? What are discrimination against women? So all of these points are very important to be discussed and to make people aware. Once people are informed about that, they will be able to make the informed decision not to have the gender discrimination. And I hope that the gender discrimination will be mitigated in the future. Thank you. Now, Thank you very much for your answer. I have another question. This question is about the defector. Would defector join this CDM movement? for the sake of um, revolution or for their sake of personal interest? For this particular question, I will answer that. We leave the privileged life joining the CDM. Once we join CDM, we lost a lot. Why, but why we, be, we, we, we make conscious decisions of becoming the defectors? Because I do not want to and we do not want to be the supporter of this of this of this um of this gang very much similar to a thug gang so we want to leave such kind of thug gang and we want to use our ability and capacity in righteousness so that's why we joined the ctm thank you and i have another question What is the role of a woman in the CDM and in the revolution? What will happen if a woman would not participate in this revolution? In order to answer this kind of question, women are the public. The, the revolution, the success of a revolution depend on the public. If we looked at the uh, if we looked at the peaceful demonstration, if we looked at the civil disobedience movement, and if we looked at the armed struggle and public joined in this, in all of these forms of struggle, and all of these are sexual because women are in it, because women are the public. And I would like to ask you to raise your hand if you would like to ask questions in person. Thank you.
And there is a question as well for how long this revolution will last. For this, I would like to invite Yi Jin Le to give your opinion for that. I'm sorry, we don't hear her very well. Well, I cannot say in numerical um, value in terms of my answer, but I can feel that this is not going to be long in this revolution. Because when we looked at all the revolutionary organizations, they are improved, they are developed within short period of the time. And there are still um, people from um, SAC joining the SAC, um, joining the CDM movement. And they are rely only on the airstrike. And in terms of the revolutionary forces, they are getting better and better while they participated in this revolution in their own form. So in my opinion, um, there will not be years that it will take to um, to 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 get this revolution finished, the stronger our motivation and our, our energy in this revolution, the quicker the, and the shorter to reach to our goal. So it is very important to have parties, uh, to have public, each and every one of public, joining this revolution in all forms. Well, I'm not giving a false hope in, in here, but I'm just sharing simply what I think as a woman myself. Thank you. At the very beginning of this revolution, we join this revolution in peaceful manner. And no one of us was there to take arm. But with all this spirit, with all this motivation, with all this energy, and with all these inevitabilities, there is that inevitable decision to have this arm struggle. Having this arm struggle, since the arm struggle is so serious that the military dictators can uh, use the airstrike only in order to bust the arm struggle and the people's spirit is also very high as you might follow that there is this helicopter being shot down by the revolutionary forces and people are cheered thank you and there is a question as well is there gender policy in nug and if you heard about that would you please share it with us well I haven't heard gender discrimination in NUG. If you looked at the compositions of the ministers, Doze Ma'aun, the foreign ministry of the NUG, is working very, very predominantly on the international stage for us. So she is a good example of not having the gender discrimination by the NUG. Thank you. And do we have more questions? 
since there is not much questions and um, that we have consumed our time. Now, I would like to have a round of wrapping up by the panelists. Thank you. What I'm saying is that the people have been uh, strong in supporting the movement. People have been, uh, it is taking time longer than we expected. We know that life is hard. The price of the commodity have increased. Economic recession and the transport, the mobility, there is no freedom. A movement for economy, people can get to, you know, easily distressed. But no, we cannot remain discouraged or depressed because it is important that we need the strength of the people. We need the support of the people. We need the participation of the people to be able to achieve this revolution. That, you know, people always say that, you know, is uh, you know, each to its own, but um, it is important that the work that we are doing, the change that we are bringing to the system is not just for us, for the others. When you have a system that is abuse the people, when you have a system that is oppressing the people, even if you are working hard, you will not get any interest from it. Any benefit from it. So to change the system, we need the support of the people. We need the participation of the people. We understand the difficulties and challenges that you are going through in this uh, horrible economic uh, decline and political instability. But to rebuild the country stronger, to rebuild the, a better future, despite the, you know, the circumstances, despite the challenges we are facing, it is important that we must win. It's an ultimate victory which will allow us to reach a new level of stability and prosperity. So it is important to remain strong, remain steadfast and committed to the, committed to the cause as well. So please continue to support us. Please continue to support the revolution and then for the revolution of process to continue fighting strongly as well. May I invite Sam to give any words of inspiration to the people who are listening to us? Hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, Sam, please go ahead. Thank you. Now, it's been almost two years of the revolution and we are having difficulty uh, listening to our speaker. So please bear with us. So, you know, now that there's been two years of revolution, the challenges are becoming more and more dramatic, not only for the community in the rural areas, but also for the people in the urban area too. The price of the companies increased, but it, and we need to stand strong. We need to remain committed and stand frail to the revolution because we need your support, financial support, logistics support, because in this revolution, it's not only about the military front. It's not only about fighting back the military. We need the support of the people to, 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 this, to support this revolution as well. In, the, in this situation, we are trying to make many changes and we, there is already progress. We are getting uh, that, um, that uh, we, are, we have seen a progress, although we are not, may not be getting much from the international community, but it is important to remain uh, committed to the cause. The last point I would like to make is that um, the military has uh, conducted an illegitimate coup d'etat and to, to, to get some legitimacy, they are planning to convene an election. The election the SEC organized is not fair, it's not free, it is not legitimate, and it will not uh, bring stability to the country. So that it is important to wipe out the election, it is important to remain, uh, you know, your resistance, however you can, wherever you can, however you come to this revolution to, and to remain strong and support us. Uh, Comrade Jingwei, can you give your any comments uh, before we wrap up the session? What I would like to say is that uh, with the longer time it takes for this revolution, for the PDF, for the CDMRs, we need your support, especially CDMRs will be you know, very discouraged. They are facing a lot of difficulty and they all want this revolution to end as soon as possible. But uh, it is important to help the CDMs. It is also important that uh, so that like the CDM, if you want, uh, if, you, if you also want uh, this revolution to end closely, we also need the CDM as an important part of revolution. So it is important to continue supporting them as well. Today, we are on our journey of the revolution, and the goal, we are within the reach of our goal. So it is important to 
remain ecosystem, it is important for us to, for the people to stand by us. And we are fighting for the people. We are, we will continue to fight for the people. So we need your support so that we can keep on fighting and we will definitely fight for you. Thank you to our three speakers for their contribution to this, uh, to today's session. And I also like to request the people of Myanmar to continue to support uh, because we are, we will be seeing that uh, the fall of the military dictators very soon. It is important to that, that all of us contribute in however we can. If you can fi donate financially, please do so. If you can contribute logistically, please do so. If you can volunteer, do so. We need every help that we can for this revolution. So I would like to end our today discussion here. I would like to wish you, um, wish you a peaceful and prosperous life very soon. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>